Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on in, everybody. Praise the Lord. To the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. We're glad to be in the service one more time. We thank God for his loving kindness and his compassion. We thank God for being so good to us. Come on in. Where the table is spread. My night. <laughs> My night, brother Christopher. Amen. The feast of the Lord is going on. The table is spread. The feast of the Lord is going on. Again, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you into our Wind Week Bible study here at Bethesda Church in Save Los Angeles, California. Please do me a favor. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. Um, uh, see some comments. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, some hearts or some some thumbs up emojis. Amen. Uh, we certainly thank God for His patience. We thank God for his grace and his compassion. Amen. The shorter children are are uh, making their descent onto to, amen, to sleep. And uh, I certainly hope and pray that wherever you are, amen, you feel the favor of God, uh, that you're warm, uh, that you're safe, and uh, most importantly, uh, that heaven is smiling upon you. So, again, we say praise the Lord to everyone. Amen. All of my, amen, brothers and sisters in the faith, we thank God for this keeping power for uh, entrusting us with this gospel for him smiling upon us one more time and wherever you may be um, I certainly hope amen the grace of God and the favor of God greet you and meet you where you are amen uh, we're going to go before God in a word of prayer before we do so again invite somebody to church tonight hit that share button hit that share button why do we keep asking y'all to hit the share button we actually hit the share buttons because it's a form of evangelism, but also it is an opportunity for us to, amen, uh, receive forensics and uh, allow us to get greater reach as it relates to the sharing of the gospel and our presentations. Uh, and certainly the scripture tells us that if you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. And so I certainly hope and pray that, amen, we adopt a mentality that our pages aren't so closed down that we can't invite people into a world. People can't know the God that we serve. Uh, that uh, we certainly will take the moment if we can share a post or a meme about our children, amen, a post and a meme uh, uh, from friends, certainly we can share the gospel. So deputize everybody to be an evangelist, amen. We get, you know, information on a weekly basis on how many homes we're entering, what our interactions are, what our engagement is, and uh, this is an opportunity that we get a chance to uh, touch people who sometimes geographically, physically could not amen uh, 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 uh make it into our local assembly and so uh what one of the uh, beauties i believe of the pandemic has been an opportunity for us to use the technology arm that the lord created for us uh, to share the gospel so let's do that even right now uh, again let everybody know that bethesda temple church is live amen and the word of god is coming forth Amen. If you have any prayer requests or prayer petitions, uh, certainly, amen, this is your moment to take a moment to put that in the comment section. Uh, do me a favor now. Amen. There's so much There's so much to pray for. Amen. We're praying for our country. We're praying for our world leaders. Uh, we're praying for all the things that are happening uh, here stateside. Uh, we have our first, amen, new uh, COVID case thing that's come up. Uh, here in California of all places. So uh, we just want God's hand of protection to be upon us, um, that he would stay the hand of this deadly disease. And then most importantly, amen, he would overwhelm us uh, with his hand of healing uh, at a time uh, that's uh, such as this. And so uh, I certainly pray that, amen, those of you who are in bereavement, those of you who are grieving, uh, those of you who, amen, just need, amen, confirmation and support, amen, if there's a prayer request or petition, amen, certainly throw it in the comments now amen that we may petition our great God to intercede on our behalf even right now shall we pray father we thank you for your loving kindness your grace we thank you for being so good to us thank you for smiling upon us we thank you oh God for enlightening us and for giving us the opportunity to come into your special sacred space oh God uh, to rightly divide the word of truth oh God to receive of you oh God to learn of you I pray oh God that tonight you open our understanding that you would draw our hearts near unto you that we would understand another amen element of your character oh God in nature 
as we endeavor, O oh God, to close this year out with raised expectations. I pray, O oh God, that we would come to know you in a new light. I pray, O oh God, that tonight as the word goes forth, that it would bring uh, clar clarity, that it would bring stimulation. I pray, O oh God, that it would challenge us, O oh God, to see you, O oh God, as you desire to operate in our lives, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, it would heighten our expectation as we uh, uh, allow ourselves, O oh God, to see you perform and to do your great work and great saving in this last evil days. And we love you and we praise you for all things. We pray that you would anoint us tonight, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, as the word of God comes forth tonight, O oh God, that you would anoint it, O oh God, that the yokes would be destroyed, that whoever would come into the broadcast, O oh God, would be edified by the preached word. I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that, O oh God, someone's heart would be uh, stirred and convicted, O oh God, that you would trouble the airways even right now, O oh God, that someone would desire to know you in the part of their sin through water baptism in Jesus' name. And we thank you for all things. We, O oh God, have so much to be down about, but we have so much to be grateful for. And so we thank you for all things, for your grace, your mercy, and your compassion. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Again, this is Pastor Kyrie Short. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Amen. I certainly hope that you enjoyed family. Amen. It's good to see everybody out in virtual space tonight. We say praise the Lord to everybody. Amen. We begin each past, each Bible class with two passages of Scripture. Amen. Join me in the book of John, chapter number 8. Amen. Verses 30-32, as well as 2 Timothy, chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Again, John chapter number 8, verses 30 through 32. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are definitely praying. Amen. For all of our children. Amen. We are certainly praying for those who are backslidden. Amen. They're certainly on our heart. Amen. God can bring the backslider in. He's married to the backslider. And so we believe, amen, that those prayer requests that went up for our children, amen, that God would cover them even now. John 8, verses 30 through 32, reads as follows. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let's go over to 2 Timothy, chapter number 2, and verse number 15. Here begins reading God's holy word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a word that grieve not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, that's 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 15. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his words. So, as we kind of close this year out, amen, this entire year we've been focused and set our hearts on this being the year of the wild. Uh, the year of wild, the year of raised expectation, the year that God, amen, reveals himself in a magnanimous way, amen, shows us his divine favor and nature, that we understand what godly expectations uh, we have, what we're to operate with as it relates to the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, but more importantly that this would be the year of great revelation and insight, amen, that God would take us, amen, through a journey spiritually that we would get a chance to understand who he is uh, and what we can expect of God. Um, there are so many things that, amen, when we come to, amen, the arena of Christendom, when we come into the arena of church, amen, sometimes people treat our relationship, amen, with God as a, amen, a, a book of rules, a book of regulations. And there are some people who are so rigid in the expectations of, amen, relationship from a rule perspective that sometimes it blinds us, I believe, to understanding the nature and character of who God is. For as much as there are expectations that God has of us, how we are to operate, those of us who have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light to show forth the praises of him who has brought us out of those conditions, uh, we certainly should have a expectation of our God, how he is to perform, and all the things that make him him. And so, uh, as I was studying the book of, I believe it was the book of uh, Proverbs, amen, we were studying and amen, got some insight related to, amen, uh, uh, the... <clears throat> Amen. Uh, the, the quest for uh, knowledge. And it was actually the book of, of Proverbs 24 and verse number 13. It says, My son, eat thou honey, or eat wisdom, because it is good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to thy soul when thou hast found it. He says, Then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Um, and so when I read, uh, studied that uh, word expectation in another translation of scripture, it says that thy hope shall not be cut off. Thy expectation, 
amen, is hope. And so when we consider this being a year of raised expectations or a year of raised hope, amen, or a year of raised faith in the lives of people, amen, our pursuit of wisdom will allow us, amen, if we should desire, amen, to have a healthy appetite of it or taste, amen, it should be likened unto a honey, which is very good for us. And as we continue to want to enjoy the sweetness of uh, revelation, the sweetness of the knowledge of our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, as we continue to pursue it, when we find it, it shall be rewarding unto us. And as we continue to enjoy the reward of the honey of God's word and the honey, amen, of understanding of his character and nature, then we as a people will never be without hope, will never be without expectation for God to perform our lives. And I thought that was so important that as we close this last quarter out this year out, amen, that we leave this calendar year 2021 and move into a new expectation of God, how he is to perform, how he is to challenge us, how he is to be glorified in our lives, how we can, amen, glean so much from the scriptures, amen, to unlock God's character, his nature, and all the things that make him him. Amen. And sometimes in that quest to fully understand, amen, what we should expect of God, sometimes we have to go back to the basics. Amen. And I think tonight is a good place to start as it relates to God's expectation for us in the realm of healing, of the realm of healing. Um, Evangelist Karen White, amen, uh, started this uh, a couple weeks back. Amen. We had our in-house revival dealing with the concept of healing. It stuck to me. And it, 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 it brought a thought to my mind of, do we believers fully have a healthy expectation of God as it relates to his ability to be Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth, the God, a man who in perpetuity brings forth healing. And so over the next couple of Bible classes, I want to deal with that concept of what to expect of God. The last few Bible classes before we had the council, amen, we dealt with our expectation of God in his role as being faithful. His faithfulness to us in provision, his faithfulness to us as a friend, his faithfulness even to us when we find ourselves in situations where we fall in short of the glory of God. I want to shift focus a bit and deal with the concept of our health, the healthy expectation of God as it relates to healing, as it relates to the, 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 the wherewithal and the breath of God's ability to be a healing a healer for us. And what we should expect of God as it relates to all facets psychologically and naturally as it relates to us being amen individuals who walk in the wealth of health from a mind body and soul perspective um and so i thought it was very interesting amen that as we amen unlock our expectations of god that we unlock this concept of what to expect of god uh concerning healing and that's the vein that God has us in uh, because there's a lot of people who walk around, I believe, living under the privilege, amen, and don't have an expectation, amen, of God's ability to perform collectively and communitively, amen, as well as God's ability to perform our individual lives. And so it brought us to a portion of scripture uh, that I think, again, will help us be, would not be without expectation concerning God's ability to heal um, um, in our minds, amen to heal amen in our most vulnerable places um and again for those who are following along a lot of this comes from again proverbs 24 verses 13 and 14 us being a people not without expectation us being a people not without a hope of healing that's the vein that the lord has me down uh we get this from the book of exodus so join, join on the book of exodus chapter number 15 verse number 26 amen Exodus chapter number 15 and verse number 26. This is the children of Israel's journey. Amen. As they desire waters uh, of, of Mara. Amen. They were bitter. Amen. And the people murmured and complained, amen, against Moses, saying, what do we have to drink? And you know how dramatic people can be, amen, when they find themselves in a situation, amen, where they are not supported. When they find themselves in a situation where uh, there is no remedy. And the scripture says that the waters, amen, of, Mura, of Mara, amen, were bitter, amen, and the people called the place Mara, and the people bitter and, and were bitter, they, the, the disposition of the water changed the disposition of the people. 
I need you to catch the rev the the revelation, amen, of that. Sometimes our environments in life sometimes change the makeup of an individual. And so sometimes the, the, the literal topography, you talked about the where of God's will. Sometimes where you are, you can take on the continents of that environment. And so here we have a people, amen, who are frustrated, who are, amen, journeying, people who are looking for Moses. Hey, Moses, you promised us the uh, uh, greener pastures. You promised us this proverbially you pro promised us, amen, we've been following you. And we reached a place where we die of thirst. And because they're so dramatic, this is the end. Because that's sometimes when you don't live in a realm of spirituality, Every time you come across a negative situation, amen, you find it to be a volatile situation. And so the scripture says that these people, amen, who are trying to drink, amen, water from a source that's bitter, amen, become bitter toward Moses. They said, what shall we drink? Uh, and, and Moses cries unto the Lord, as all leaders do. When they don't have answers, don't know what to do, we cry out to God. Amen. And so he says, Lord, what shall we drink? The Lord showed him to a tree. Amen. Uh, which, amen, he had, uh, and, uh, tells him, praise if you take his rod, and when he cast it into the waters, amen, the waters were made sweet. Amen. There he had made for them a statute and ordinance where he had proved them. The Lord proved himself to be faithful in provision by taking a situation that was poisonous or a situation that was bitter, amen, and literally making an environment that is bountiful and blessed for people. Amen. The Lord, in his wisdom, took a situation, amen, of bitterness and made the situation sweet. And as a result of it, amen, he tells them this. He says, if you'll hearken unto my voice, amen, to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in my sight, and will give ear to his statutes, and, or to his commandments and all his statutes, he says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. It's interesting that they had an interesting dichotomy concerning their environment. They likened their environment, amen, to being um, unsubstantiated, amen, uh, uh, um, a resource, uh, a bitter resource, something that was non-useful. Uh, however, the Lord, in the midst of their natural need, takes the time to address their spiritual condition. Because that's how God works sometimes. Again, sometimes we can take on the continents of an environment and become bitter and become broken, failing to realize that that negativity is a spiritual condition. And so the remedy to their spiritual condition was not necessarily sweet water. It was getting them to take on a sweet uh, continents and a sweet spiritual persona. So this is what the Lord does. He addresses the natural need, but not without telling Moses, amen, to tell these people, amen, that I have the ability to maneuver every situation in their life when they rise to the occasion spiritually. So the expectation of the people was that Moses find a way to get them something to drink, amen, and in some cases they'd given up. But at the same time, God has an expectation of his people for which he says that if you hearken to my voice, if you keep my statutes and my ordinances, if you take on a continence, amen, that is sweet toward me, amen, he says, I will, in, I will ensure you that none of the diseases, again, they didn't see, amen, any of the spiritual connotations associated with the waters of Mara. They just saw their natural need. So Lord saw a people, amen, who had taken on a continence, amen, that was, amen, of a disease, of a spiritual disease that was hindering their ability to understand the sweetness of the water of Jesus or the sweetness of the water of their relationship with God, Jehovah. He says, and so if you keep my commandments, if you keep ear to my commandments, you keep all my statutes, he says, he says, uh, uh, these diseases will not come upon you which I have put upon the Egyptians. He says, for I am the God that healeth thee. And it's in that revelation, amen, that we find this concept, Jehovah Rapha. Uh, when you see that word, I am the Lord, translated in scripture, amen, we get an invitation to understand God and his nature and character as Jehovah. Amen. And many, it, it, and, and, and the Hebrew interpretation whenever you see the word the lord amen in the hebrew it is written yahweh or yah I and mean, i know that's that's amen that, that's a whole different amen uh, uh bible study but i guess we'll dive into it a bit yahweh uh, y h w h is the terminology amen used to define that term yahweh 
However, in the Latin, all right, because we, amen, have parts of the Bible that are interpreted for us, amen, in Latin, amen, the Latin interpretation of that is Jehovah. And so interchangeably used is Yahweh and Jehovah. But this is the introduction that we get to the nature of God concerning healing here in verse number 26. He says, for I am the Lord. I am Jehovah, the God that healeth thee, Jehovah the Rapha. All right. Now, in order for us fully to appreciate him being Jehovah Rapha, amen, in order for us to fully break down what that means, we have to start with our understanding of what it is for him to be Jehovah. All right. This is the proper name. This is the proper authority of God. In order for us to have an expectation of God, we have to be able to fully understand and dissect and comprehend who we're actually talking about, who he is. Because there are people who have expectations based upon their name. All right. Let's this let's dig for just a quick second. All right. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing the comments, so I, you know, hopefully you engage before a quick moment. But amen. Sometimes, amen. When we have a man, a name that's given to us, uh, 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 there is an expectation that comes along with it. All right. When I think of the name Chiron, I already think of leader. There's an expectation of leadership. There's an expectation of commitment. There's an expectation of me as a father, an expectation of me as a provider, me as the expectation, amen, of someone, amen, who uh, 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 has to endure. There's a, there's a, there is a, uh, there's an association with my name, and as a result of what my name is, amen. Uh, in many cases, sometimes an unrealistic, realistic expectation that people place on me because they don't know me. All right. There's an expectation of my performance based upon my name. Now, I don't know who's necessarily here because, again, I can't necessarily see, amen, who's all in the comments. But if you could take a moment, amen, just to, amen, put your name in the comment section. And if you don't mind sharing and what people's expectation of you is. Engage me for a quick moment. No, in most cases, amen, we would be in, in sanctuary and we would have the board up and we would kind of do that. But whatever your name might be, if your name is Jeff, your name is John, amen. If I think of John, amen, uh, 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 you know, I think of uh, already, I think of John the Baptist. So if your name is John, I think of someone who is fearless or someone, amen, who is a champion. If, if I if I had the name, uh, uh, wow, um, give me give me a name. Uh, uh, if, if I had the name Thomas, right? Uh, not that necessarily, amen, uh, uh, the, uh, Thomas from the Bible perspective. When I think of Thomas, I think of my grandfather, right? Thomas Shorter. I think of someone who's a hard worker. I think of someone who is intuitive. I think of someone who challenges the system. I think of someone, amen, who uh, is, is in that force. But whatever your name might be, just engage for a moment, amen. And in your own vernacular, in your own thought, what do you think, amen, there's, uh, what do you think is the healthy expectation of your name? All right. Let me just see if anybody's even engaging me in the comment section. All right. Uh, let's see. Is anybody down there? All right. Probably not. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. So this is Hazel put dependable. Good. Uh, Sister Gloria automatically. When I think of Gloria, I think of amen. Glorious. All right. Because of, of the word. Amen. Uh, glory. Amen. So I think of something special, something unique. Amen. I think of the derivative of that. Um, when I think of amen, uh, somebody. All right. Monica put amen. Mothers. Uh, Shirley put leader. All right. Sister Makiba put enduring. Sister Sandra helper. Definitely, definitely, I mean, agree with those sentiments. Uh, Sister Hazel, thanks, amen. Dependable, all right? All of these things, amen, um, are, are microcosms of who we are, all right? Because our name sometimes precedes even us, all right? So sometimes when your name comes up in the, in the mouths of certain people, oh, that's Kyron calling, all right? If Kyron's calling, all right, <laughs> it could have, okay, oh, that's Pastor Kyron calling, depending on, amen, uh, what, what light they see me in, or that's Kyron, I can't stand that guy, you know, or or that, that's Kyron, oh, something must be important for that person to be calling me. So every time we look at something through the lens of a name, there's already identity associated with it. And so in order for us to fully dissect this concept of God being uh, uh, sufficient in healing and expectation that we have of God being a healer, we have to unlock what God's name is. And his name is Jehovah. If we go back over to the book of Exodus chapter number three, 
Moses, amen, uh, if you just follow with me, Moses, amen, when he's having an instruction of God, amen, and he asks them to say, well, you know, this is verse number 13, Moses said unto God, behold, uh, when I come unto the children of Israel, you have told me all these things I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to lead these people, amen, out of Egypt, that they would go to the mountain and and, and, uh, and serve you, and amen, and, and, and then the Lord, amen, uh, you, you've given me, he says, but what is your name, you know, what shall I say unto them, who is sending me, all right, and that's when God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Translated, I am Yahweh. All right, I am Jehovah. Uh, he said, Thus shall I say unto the Lord, such shall I say unto the children of Israel, I am or Jehovah have sent me unto you. All right, so Moses and his longing to understand the power of God, amen, gets our first glimpse of to what God even names himself. His name is Jehovah. All right, we even get this in the book of, of Psalms, chapter number 68. I just want you to finger with me just a little bit, all right? Psalm 68, amen, uh, and verse number four, amen, the writer of the Song of David tells us, amen, sing praises unto God, sing unto God, sing praises unto his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name Jah, which interpreted means Jehovah, and rejoice before him. So again, all of these things give us insight into what, amen, we're dealing with, all right? Because in order for us to fully grasp the expectation of what God is supposed to do, amen, in our lives, we have to understand what God's name is. Because immediately when you say a name like Jehovah or Yahweh, amen, those in Jewish customs thought this name was so holy, so high. Look at what, amen, even David says about him. Let's sing praises unto God. Let's sing praises unto his name. Let's exalt him that rideth upon the heavens. <laughs> uh, think of the glory, the wonder. If I just looked at that without even giving any other translations, so I think of riding, I think of, amen, someone that's on a chariot, someone, amen, to think that, that heaven, amen, is the vehicle for the strength of the power, amen, of God. Look at that imagery that we have right there. Sing praises unto his name, by his name, Jah, all right? Uh, and rejoice before him, all right? Another glimpse that we get of the totality and magnitude of his name comes from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 42. Isaiah chapter number 42. There's always a balance, amen, in teaching, amen, because the goal of teaching and the goal, amen, of Bible study is for us to learn. That's why when the scripture tells us, study to show thyself approved unto God, amen, I think sometimes people miss the component of studying because we sometimes just want to memorize information. And sometimes you can get lost in in in, in in uh, uh, recital, you can get a loss sometimes into just, amen, learning concepts or studying concepts that you forget the learning portions of it. The learning is what draws us closer to the character and nature of God. And so when the scripture tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God, it means to learn of God so that you have a healthy appetite, expectation of God. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. We're in Isaiah chapter 42 and verse number five. All right. It says, uh, for thus, thus saith the Lord, uh, uh, thus saith God the Lord, all right? Jehovah, again, we're introduced to Jehovah. Whenever you see the word, the Lord, Jehovah. It meant he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth uh, and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it uh, and spirit to them that walketh therein. I am the Lord, Jehovah, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of a people uh, for a light of the Gentiles to open the eyes, uh, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners uh, out of prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am Jehovah. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give unto another, neither my praise uh, to graven images. Ah, he even goes on to say, <laughs> Behold the former things, amen, are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I will tell thee of I will tell you of them. All right. So once again, when we look at the, the, the nature of God, it's tied into his name. What is his name? His name is Jehovah. Let's lift up songs unto him who rides through the deserts, whose name is Jehovah. Let's exalt before him. All right. All right. Uh, so most Bible scholars, again, 
the are you a man that uh, Yahweh and Jehovah depending on the translations these are the proper names of God all right however amen there is more for us to learn as it relates to this name because compounded in his names amen provide the revelation of his character and his ability to perform in his activity so you have Jehovah and you have Yahweh these are the most common names that we find throughout the Old Testament whenever you see the Lord amen you have to look at it through the lens of what it means to be Jehovah all right Jehovah in the beginning amen uh, uh, God amen Jehovah all right okay let's go deeper all right in order for us again to understand again his nature and for us to understand the revelation of his character it's important for us to understand what his name is all right because if we don't fully understand his name then we don't understand his identity and the power associated amen with his name all right and this this is important to, for us because it is this revelation amen that helps us understand the multi-tiered layer amen of everything that he is and all that is encompassed upon his name all right Oh, uh, virus detection. I apologize. I'm using that. <laughs> All right. All right. So hopefully, hopefully I'm not losing anybody. Hopefully everybody is still a man rocking with me. All right. So again, his name is Yahweh. All right. All right. When we see his name used as Yahweh, used as Jehovah in scripture, amen. Jehovah is the most sacred and the most holy name of God. Amen. The Jews had such an appreciation and a fear of their name uh, that, that they didn't allow his name to be polluted. Amen. They literally, amen, except for the Day of Atonement, amen, when the high priest would come, that's the only time that they would utter the word Yahweh, amen, as he entered into the holies of holies. Amen. His name was so holy, amen, that it required the priest to remove their clothes, to take a bath, to put on clean garments, all right, to use unused pens, amen, in order for them to literally articulate the wonder and power of his name, all right? To the Jews, amen, Jehovah became a name that was was a name of distance a name of appreciation and revelation amen it became a, a it became a moniker of the children of israel to keep a distance because his name was so holy all right however the significance of the name yahweh or the significance of the name of jehovah actually in another translation means to run into all right <laughs> and so it is that interpretation of you know uh, uh yahweh or jehovah amen which amen has a sufficiency and a measure of holiness associated with it that people want to give a distance to it when you really look at the revelation of what it means for him to be jehovah it means to run into so hopefully now that gives us some context amen associated with the idea or the concept of him being a man jehovah rapha all right because again a name that is so holy a name that is so powerful a name that is so mighty amen for some people it's too much for me to approach however that's the revelation that we get when we look at the book of proverbs amen chapter 18 verse 10 that said the lord is a strong a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are saved amen there's a name amen that is so reverent that people want to keep a distance but it's a name that empowers us to run into it and so when we understand what his name is then we'll understand all the attributes that make him god amen all the attributes that reveal his character amen in perpetuity are things that should draw us nearer to him are things that should draw us closer to him again in order for us to fully understand what it means for us to have an expectation then we have to understand what his name symbolizes all right all right so israel again Israel again, amen, gets a full revelation of the meaning and the character of Jehovah, amen, as expressed, amen, by Moses, amen, getting this revelation from God that I am, I am sent you, I am, amen, interpreted it means Haya. All right, this Haya, which we and sometimes get the word hallelujah from. He says, I am Haya, I am Haya. That Greek translation of Haya, amen, speaks to Elohim, amen, which speaks to the continuous action of God. All right, Elohim is actually, amen, for those keeping at home, Haya is H A Y A H. All right, Elohim, amen, speaks to, amen, the ego or the Elohim, which is E L M I. I'm sorry, let me make sure I got that right. Uh, E-I-M-I, -I, all right. All right, which speaks to, so, E-M-I, amen, which translated in the Hebrew speaks to his continuous action, amen, and in perpetuity or in continuation, amen, a name of reverence, amen, at all times. So whenever you use the word Jehovah, amen, it is 
continuous all right it is a word of action it speaks to his self-sufficiency but it speaks to his eternity all right so when moses amen asks us who is when he's speaking from the concept of i am amen he is speaking to god's amen eternity when god says i am that i am he is saying i am jehovah i am i am amen i am yahweh it, it means i'm speaking from a amen a a, a portion uh of eternity that speaks to me not only being I was but I am but also implying that I am yet existing all right it alludes to amen his covenant keeping ability and power all right when he says I am it speaks to amen a continuation it speaks to a cycle it speaks to what was it speaks to where he is now and it speaks to his power to perform amen in perpetuity all right it's important you understand that because without us fully understanding amen what it makes what makes him jehovah what makes him yahweh what makes him self-sufficiency what make uh, self-sufficient which makes him the i am without understanding amen his consistency then none of the other things make sense all right because he goes on to be what jehovah nisi all right. Uh, when it's when we see Jehovah Nisi translated, it means what the Lord our banner, which means the I am that I am, which was am now and it will be in the future. Amen. Speaks to the concept of God. The Lord is our banner. The Lord is amen. Our amen banner. All right. Jehovah. Amen. Ra speaks to the Lord is my shepherd. All right. Which means I was I am. When you translate and look at what it means for him to be Jehovah, it means I am continuously a shepherd, your guide, your sustainer, all right? Was, I am, am in self-sufficiency, all right? Again, we don't understand any of this unless we fully understand what his name is, all right? When we see Jehovah, amen, translated, I am Haya, again, H-A-Y-A-H, all right? It means to be, it means to exist. All right. This is why it is so revelatory for us. Amen. When Jesus says that before Abraham was, I am, he is speaking to Amen. not who he is at the moment. He is speaking to his oneness. Amen. His sufficiency that before there was a was. I am all right, <laughs> all right. And this is it's it's and this leads to the revelations that we get. Amen. Of his sufficiency as Jehovah, and this is what makes Jesus 100% God and 100% man. But it makes him God is because only he can give the revelation of the I am by saying that I am from the perspective of existence and was. And as a result of it, you have the revelations of I am. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the light of the world. Amen. I am the shepherd. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life, I am the resurrection, all those things, I am the vine, all of these revelations that we get of the I am are tied, amen, to his haya, which is I am, which means that I am self-sufficient, which means I am self-existent, which means I am Jehovah. OK, so whatever you place on that, <laughs> whatever you place behind that, it speaks to a self-sufficiency that when you call his name, amen, there is a great revelation associated with all of these attributes of him that speaks to his self-sufficiency, that speaks to his infinite wisdom, it speaks to his eternal and continuous state. I am Jehovah. Amen. I am Yahweh. I am Jehovah. I am Yahweh. Again, so whenever you tack onto that, amen, you speak of the eternity associated with that declaration. So when you say, I am Jehovah Shammah, amen, <laughs> the Lord is there. You are speaking again to his state of what was as well as his ever present nature. All right. When you say Jehovah Tiskanu, all right, the Lord, our God is righteous. All right. You are speaking again to his self-sufficiency, his eternity and his continuous nature and his ability to be a God of righteousness. Every time you make a de declaration, uh, um, Concerning him, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our God will provide, all right? You speak again to his self-sufficiency, you speak to his continuous nature, and with it builds a healthy expectation of who we believe and know our God to be, all right? 
So again, in order for us, for us fully to make sense of how we can have a healthy expectation and what to expect of God as it relates to his healing, it takes us all the way back to Exodus, a man 15 and 26. It starts with us understanding what his name is, all right? Because just as we defined our characteristics associated with our name, all right, there is an expectation every time that we call upon God. And with that expectation should come an expectation of consistency, uh, an expectation, a man that is uh, 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 infinite, all right? An expectation that speaks, amen, to his, 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 his isness, amen, to who he was and who he shall be, his continuation, amen. That's what is all defined when we get to Jehovah. So when you add Jehovah Shalom, I am the God of peace, all right? I am self-sufficient. I am eternal in peace, all right? And this is the nature that I possess. And when you define me in that light, amen, when you define me as Jehovah Shalom, amen, you are saying, in essence, that I am a God of self-sufficiency, amen, with an external and a eternal, amen, and with an infinite amen, ability to perform as it relates to peace concerning your situation, concerning whatever place you may be. Certainly hope this is all making sense. Amen. All right. So now that we unlock who he is, all right, he is Jehovah. All right. Again, I'm just going with the Latin. All right. I'm not going to argue with the, the black Israelites tonight. All right. <laughs> all right. But nevertheless, Je Jehovah. All right. Jehovah. So sufficient, eternal, infinite. All right. Again, when he clearly reveals himself, amen, he's saying, I am. And the I am that I am becomes literally the answer to every affliction that we have. All right. As he reveals himself. How do we see this? Uh, if you just take a look at it, it through, nat through, through natural lenses, natural eyes, what we always look to and always go to, it's in the book of, of Psalms, chapter 23. When we read, amen, the, uh, Psalms 23, all right, he's revealing himself and all of his characteristics. All right, let me get back, all right, so I can get back on course. This always happens to me, y'all, uh, as I'm trying to, amen, teach what I got. When he says, the Lord is my shepherd, all right, again, whenever you see the Lord, you see Jehovah. Jehovah is my shepherd, all right? I shall not want. Immediately, what are we drawn to? Jehovah Jireh, all right? Uh, 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 he says, he leadeth me, amen, down, or he make me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. When we see still waters, what do we think of? We think of peace, right? Still waters symbolize peace. Who is he? Jehovah Shalom, all right? Uh, when we look at the next portion of scripture, it says, uh, uh, he restoreth my soul. What do we have? Jehovah Rapha. All right. The Lord that heals. All right. That we just seen in the book of Exodus chapter 15 and 26. Uh, tangibly speaking, when he says he maketh me what uh, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. All right. This is the Lord, the Lord. Amen. And the expectation we have of him, Jehovah Tiskanu. All right. The Lord, our righteousness. All right. Um, uh, he says, uh, 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 yea, though I walk, what, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, of, um, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. All right, for thou art with me. You are with me. Speaks to Jehovah Shammah. All right, the Lord is there. All right. Uh, he says, Thou preparest a table for, or thy right hand staff comfort me, right? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head over, my cup runneth over. When I think of the presence of my enemy, we have what? Jehovah Nisi, all right? The Lord our banner, the Lord our defense, all right? Uh, uh, he anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over, all right? Uh, uh, Jehovah, amen, uh, uh, Mechadish, all right? Which means uh, uh, the Lord who sanctifies, he anoints, all right? All of these wonderful descriptions of who we have and who we see, we see illustrated, amen, here in Psalms 23. They speak again to the character of God that every time you say the Lord, every time you say God, built in it is an expectation for him to provide healing and for him to provide peace and for him to be our righteousness and for him to be our banner and for him to be our sanctifier. But you never really have an expectation of him unless you fully know his name. And so when Jesus says, I am, <laughs> even for Abraham was, I am, his name encompasses it all. So if you say the name Jesus, with it comes peace, with him comes anointing, with him comes sanctification with him becomes a man an appreciation of a being our banner of him being a man our healing him being our righteousness all of these things are unlocked in the character of jesus amen as the word is made flesh all right so jehovah rapha the lord that heals all right again we go back again to the book of exodus chapter number 15 again i hope this is 
blessing someone, but I'm building a foundation. And you can't build a foundation and say that you have an expectation of healing if you don't know exactly what his name encompasses. His name encompasses healing. He becomes Jehovah Rapha. All right. Now that we have that understanding of him being sufficient and continuous, amen, he tells the children of Israel, amen, who are here, amen. Uh, uh, and, and Mara, he tells them, amen, as they are complaining about their conditions, complaining about what they're going through. He says that the antidote, amen, to healing is that we keep his commandments, amen, that we walk in his statutes, all right? And he says that if you do that which is right in my sight, you do all these things, he says, amen, I will ensure, I you should have an expectation of me <laughs> concerning healing, all right, that none of the diseases amen that came upon the Egyptians will come upon you because I am the Lord I am Jehovah again I am sufficient I am amen continuous I am the Lord amen Jehovah Rapha the Lord that healeth that healing is not temporary that healing is continual that healing is perpetual I am not he does not say I am the Lord that heals thee although he does heal Amen. Uh, uh, temporarily, he does heal and there's an immediacy associated with his, his healing. He says, I am the Lord that healeth. There should be an expectation concerning healing, amen, of perpetuity that comes along with him because it's tied to his name. He says, I am, I am Yahweh, I am the Lord, I am Jehovah that healeth thee. All right. Healing is a part of my characteristic. Healing is a part of what makes me me. All right. So as we go forward, amen, it's with the understanding that he is Jehovah Rapha, amen, or the Lord that healeth, amen, that we see the, 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 amen, the microcosm, amen, or the, the, the perspective of who God is concerning his name, Jehovah again, which means to be, which means to exist, which means to be self-sufficiency, amen. Also, another interpretation says that when you see Jehovah, it means also to become. All right, because he's not stagnant. Although he is, he has the ability, amen, and sufficiency to be whatever we have in need of because he is God. He is the source. If he doesn't do it, it won't exist. If he doesn't do it, amen, it won't be here. All right. So with that, amen, he is more importantly, amen, the God that is, amen, the God to be, amen, the God that is existing, the God that is to become. But also more importantly, he is the God that, that will become known. All right, there's a portion of his name, amen, when you translate it in the Hebrew, when we study, amen, Jehovah, when you study the concept of Jehovah, uh, uh, or uh, Yahweh, amen, it speaks to the revelation, amen, that as we grow in our relationship with God, amen, things as we learn, as we eat of him, amen, there are things that become known to us, all right, so as our relationship grows with him, Amen. There is a revelation. And as he begins to reveal himself, this is what leads to all the Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom. All of these principles, all these things are attributes that are added to his name because these are revelations that come uh, uh, as he reveals himself. All right. As he reveals himself, amen, even to the children of Israel, he becomes Jehovah Rapha. Rapha means to restore, it means to heal, it means to make healthy, all right, in the Hebrew. So when you combine these two words, he is Jehovah Rapha, all right, he is Jehovah who heals, all right, Jehovah being, amen, self-existent, amen, the ability, amen, to be a source of healing, but also to reveal and to make healthy, all right, when you add those two words together, all right. Jehovah being the great physician, amen, who takes care of our physical and emotional needs, all right, as we see in the book of Exodus chapter number 15 and verse number 26, all right, let's go further, let's study some more, all right, uh, hopefully again, you're learning, amen, more and more about this name, and as you begin to unlock the name, as you begin to unlock, amen, the power of his name, amen, then more importantly, amen, you begin to realize the characteristics associated with it. And now your expectation shifts. When I call on Chiron, I expect dependability. When I call on Chiron, I'm calling for a leader, right? When I call on God, there should be a healthy expectation of what his ability to perform is. Let's go to the book of Psalms, Psalms 34. Psalms 34, through the lens of David, this is what, amen, David would tell us, Psalms 34 and 19, 
He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. All right. Here again is an expectation associated with healing because we see the Lord, Jehovah. All right. The existent one. All right. The self-sufficient one. All right. Many are the afflictions. We see afflictions. Many are the challenges, the tests. Amen. The afflictions deal also with a condition of health. All right. Of the righteous. Those who, amen, strive for righteousness will deal with, amen, uh, afflictions. They will deal with challenges. They will deal with issues concerning their spiritual health, all right? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the things, all right, that afflictions deals with the concept of sin, all right? Deals with, again, the torments of living a life of those, amen, who want to live, amen, a life of glory and honor unto God. The expectation of us should be, amen, that if I'm living a life of righteousness that I'm susceptible a man to affliction I am susceptible a man to things like sin that come a man to take me out of a place a man of fellowship with him all right many are the afflictions of the righteous many 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 underline that word <laughs> it says but there is an expectation of God the expectation of God is in the midst of the afflictions of the righteous, all right? The Lord brings his hand of deliverance, all right? The Lord brings his hand of sufficiency to deliver us out of all of them, all right? Expectation that we should have of God is that for those of us who are striving for the right, the afflictions associated with this walk will come to try to contaminate our righteousness, amen? Uh, all those people, amen, who every now and then, amen, uh, although I thought I was delivered from cussing, amen, find myself, amen, afflicted, I find myself reverting, find myself, amen, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, find myself challenged in my spirit, man, all right, find myself accused, find myself, amen, in torment, find myself afflicted against the state, amen, of whole, holistic holiness unto God, right, many are the afflictions, many are the tests and the trials, all right, many are the things that come to bring a man a, a disease and impairment amen to the righteous but the expectation is that the lord delivered them out of all of them all right shifting our focus shifting our expectation all right to understand challenges are going to come there are going to be things amen that come amen and as a result of it amen we can stand in the confidence of god being jehovah rapha amen the god that healeth all right the god that brings the deliverance as it relates to healing amen that he will fortify us and that he will restore us and he will bring a deliverance to put us back in the condition of righteousness unto him let's go to the book of psalms 103 psalms 103 and verse 22 Psalms 103 and verse amen 22 I might have these out of sorts amen uh, bless the Lord uh, all his works amen in the places of all his dominion bless the Lord oh my soul not the one I was going to amen uh, forgive me I think I might have wrote that scripture down alright uh, but nevertheless let's go to Isaiah let's go to Isaiah 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 53 amen forgive me sometimes I, I get to write in amen sometimes I We'll write, we'll write it down on paper and put it on the computer and be in the wrong place. We forgive me. All right, let's go to Isaiah 53. All right, Isaiah 53. All right, speaks again. Amen to amen. Isaiah's ability to see Jehovah, amen, in the light of a healer concerning our future state. All right, uh, verse amen number four tells us that surely he have borne our griefs and have carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Amen. But he was wounded for our transgressions. All right. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, amen, was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are all like sheep gone astray. We all have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet not he opened his mouth. He was brought as a sheep. Amen. To the slaughter. And as a sheep before the shears is dumb. So uh, he opened not his mouth. Amen. Uh, he was taken from prison and from judgment. Uh, who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the, of the living. Uh, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. All right. Again, it speaks again to an element of healing. All right. 
he says, if you back up and look at the, in the ESV version, it says, Surely he hath borne our griefs, he carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, spent of God, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, all right? Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and he and his wounds, and with his wounds we are healed. With his with his wounds. <laughs> with his wounds we are healed, all right? This speaks again to the expectation that we should have of God, the work of Jesus Christ, amen, him being the I am that I am, amen, uh, revealed in New Testament, it revealed, amen, amen, as he walked here on earth, as the word becomes flesh, should become, amen, a revelation, and that word should now become flesh concerning us. It says that his piercing for our transgressions, him being crushed for our iniquities, him laying upon us the chastisements, amen, those chastisements, those punishments, those things that we earn amen brought us the peace all right uh and it's with his wounds with his tattered body amen it's with those things that were stretched upon him on calvary's cross that produces a healing for us with those wounds we are healed we are healed amen from the psychological torment we're healed amen from amen the physical impairments by his stripes by the things that he endured because he is jehovah because he is amen self-sufficient amen his sacrifice on calvary's cross produces a state amen for us that we don't have to wait on healing we are healed all right we're healed now we can walk in that freedom we can walk in that abundance it's by his stripes amen that we are healed all right this is the expectation that we should have of god because of that finished work amen that we have all those things, amen, those weights, those transgressions, those punishments, those things that leave us in a spiritual condition, amen, that leave us vulnerable, that leave us hurt, amen, that leave us oppressed, amen, the work of Calvary, the work that he's done has been manifested, and as a result of it, we no longer have to live in the bondage and the brokenness and the shame, amen, uh, 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 the weight, amen, of being estranged to God, and the burden and the weight, amen, and, uh, and certainly, the penalty and consequence of sin as a result amen of us amen so expectation of us should be amen for us to align ourselves with god's word and that alignment of god's word tells us amen that he has borne all of those things he has borne all of those penalties he has borne all of those weights he has borne all of those afflictions he has borne all of those things amen that make us estranged to god and we now can walk in healing because his wounds produce the healing his willing to take it produces a healing for us both psychologically amen and both naturally for us to walk in that freedom and for us to walk in that healing so we should have an expectation of healing because the expectation of healing is as if he's done it all even when i fall short i can go back and look at calvary's cross and it should produce in the healing it should produce amen a tone it should produce a amen a spiritual mental space that allows me amen to take on amen the work of calvary to walk in a freedom and a healing because the penalties and the ways have already been paid because he is jehovah rapha he is the god that healeth because we will always be in this flesh we will always need to look to calvary for strength come on somebody talk to me don't be bougie tonight because we will always be in this flesh we will always need amen we will always have to look look our eyes toward calvary to view the cross for jesus die for me all right all right we will always be in a perpetual state of needing his healing because amen there is none else that can heal our soul's diseases nothing but the blood of jesus amen the blood of jesus and the work of calvary's cross produces a healing for us to no more have to walk in the condemnation and the shame all right that's the expectation that we should have of god let's go to second chronicles chapter number seven verse number 14 because there's also expectation that we have concerning jehovah rapha amen as it relates to our positioning amen as believers all right the scripture says amen that as amen solomon gets ready to dedicate the temple as he finished the house of the lord the scripture says solomon had planned to do amen in the house of the lord amen with his own eyes uh, uh, had done i'm sorry Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord, and in his own house, he successfully accomplished all the things that he had planned to do, he accomplished. Then the Lord appeared unto Solomon in the night 
And he said unto him, he says, I have heard your prayers. He says, and, and, and have chosen this place to be a place, a house of sacrifice. All right. This temple that you have built, I have chosen this place to be a place that I receive. Amen. Sacrifice. He says, if I shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I see the pestilence among my people, he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will what? Heal their land. We have a God who is Jehovah Rapha, a man who is your God. He becomes Jehovah. Amen. He takes ownership and personal accountability for the children of Israel. And just as he took responsibility for them as he's manifested in flesh, amen, and revealed through Jesus Christ, he takes ownership of us. And that everlasting covenant that he makes, amen, and sufficiency deals even to the condition, amen, of sin that impairs us, ah, that leaves us vulnerable, that leaves us in a condition that desires healing. Once again, this is what he says. He says, he says, if my people, right, call by my name, humble themselves, right, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. He says, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and will I heal their land. I, Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth, there's an expectation that when a people turn their heart toward me, when a people, amen, give up. Amen. The vice of the world, when the people uh, have a sensitivity and when the people have a heart and yearn and a longing to be in fellowship with me, there's a healthy expectation that I, the Lord, will bring healing to the land. That there is nothing that would be able to devour them. That there would be no pestilent, amen, that would be able to, 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 to stop a people. He says that there's one thing that can produce a healing. If there's one thing that I stand, amen, in perpetuity of and in continuation of. It is being the God that can heal and bring healing to the land. When people, amen, with a raised expectation, commit themselves to prayer. Commit themselves, amen, to repentance. Could return, amen, commit themselves to turning back to me. All right. Whenever we have a heart that turns back to him, whenever we have a desire to repent and to pray and to seek his face and to turn from our wicked ways, there is an expectation of healing, an expectation that comes, amen, of a healing in the land. And I say to myself that probably the position that we're in right now, the predicament that we're in right now concerning this pandemic, concerning the things that we're seeing, concerning the mutations, concerning all that's going on, deals with a people who have become so arrogant and self-sufficient that they aren't seeing that we're being devoured up. But they're not seeing the amen that, that this is the opportunity where God desires to be Jehovah Rapha. The God that desires to heal it. But it requires a people to turn. It requires a people to awaken to say, you know, we're in a situation, amen, that uh, amen, that we need to uh, turn our hearts back to God. We're in, amen, we're in a situation, amen, in a predicament, and, and we're in a space of, of consciousness, amen, that is so far removed from God that we need to seek his face even now. And his promise is, is that if we seek his face and we turn from our wicked ways, he says, I will hear from heaven. He says, I will forgive the sin. I will forgive the sin. Ah, the sin. Amen. Sin is the contamination, y'all. Sin is the contamination. Sin is the thing, amen, that forces us from a place of complete healing and wholeness with God. But when we turn our hearts back to him, when we with supplication, when we make our hearts cry, amen, when we have people, my people, if my people called by my name, if my people who say they are, amen, followers of Jehovah, Yahweh, and then Jesus Christ, if my people call by my name, exercise humility, pray, seek my face, make the main thing the main thing again, he says, then I operate as Jehovah Rapha. The God that healeth, the God that restores, the God that brings and puts back into full condition. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Because that is who he is. That's his characteristic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone has a question right here. All right. He says, praise the Lord, Pastor. Is it fair to say that the Lord still reserves the privilege to determine who he will heal, who he might not, uh, and, and who uh, might not receive healing, even though he has the power to heal? Can you expand on that thought? Yes, I sure can. God in his sovereignty, God being a man, Jehovah, is self-sufficient. He has, he, he, he argues with no one. <laughs> uh, uh, he debates with no one. He, he doesn't counsel with anyone. 
he is the God, amen, who has the ability, amen, to rain down fire and pestilence, amen, and the God, amen, to stay, amen, concerning healing. Amen. He and his sovereignty, he and his ability, amen, has the, he, uh, as God all by himself, amen, uh, uh, arbitrates with no one. He reserves his right and privilege, amen, because of his sufficiency as God, amen. And so, yes, that is, amen, one of the characteristics of God is he has the ability, amen, to, amen, to, to, to rain down, amen, judgment as he sees fit. Amen. Him being Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth, does not amen, cancel out him being the God, amen, of, of judgment. All right. Um, and, and the God, amen, who can, amen, is inspired upon to bring healing, amen, for those who repent, as well as to deal with those who choose not to. All right. Uh, there are consequences for sin. All right. God uh, will, amen, uh, exercise judgment as he sees fit. His sovereignty, his sovereign nature, amen, as Jehovah self sufficient, gives him the authority to operate in a realm. All right. So there are some things that are, are associated with our deeds. Um, there are certain things, amen, that, that make us. Amen. Uh, uh, castaways. I, I think of amen as it relates to him even being the Lord that healeth. He has to exercise judgment uh, against amen. Miriam. All right. Has to execute uh, execute judgments uh, against. Uh, I want to say Miriam and, and Aaron. Amen. For their amen uh, criticism of leadership. All right. And he, he he plagues them with leprosy. And the scripture says that they could not go any further until the Lord resolved that matter. All right. So God, in his sovereign nature, amen, he is the God that healeth. He is also the God, amen, uh, who can rain down um, destruction. All right. He is also the God, amen, who to the reverse, amen, if there is, amen, the healing, uh, if there is a fountain of healing, amen, that, that we that we speak of that flows through evangel evangel's vein, if there is a shree of, of life, amen, from which we live and harvest off of, there is also uh, the... Uh, 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 um, uh, um, the uh, um, the reciprocity of that amen that that is or uh, I'm sorry um, uh, um, I'm not saying that word right there's also the opposite of that um, the reciprocate of that amen which is amen hell amen which is a condition amen that is of torment um, where there is no healing all right where there is no amen there is no amen uh, there, there's separation from God and so anything that's in separation of God ultimately will die and it's of uh, destruction. So God in his sovereignty, amen, writes the playbook and he says that we should have a healthy expectation of healing, amen, if we should yield and hearken to his statutes, listen to his voices, amen, and all the things that he desires and that deals again with the natural as well as the, amen, spiritual condition. So I certainly hope, amen, that answers your question, amen. Um, if not, you can always call me, amen, <laughs> we could have, I always love talking to Sylvia, amen, we could have more dialogue about, amen, God and his sovereignty as it relates to his ability to heal and to perform, all right? Let's go to the book of Jeremiah for more context. The book of Jeremiah, chapter number 30. Again, unlocking Jehovah Rapha. Amen. Jehovah, the God that healeth, healeth and what our expectation of healing shall be. All right. Uh, book of Jeremiah, chapter number 30, tells us where the Lord comes to Jeremiah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write all these words that I have spoken unto thee in thy book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. Jehovah, okay. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. And these are the words that the Lord, Jehovah, again, we receive the, we receive the Lord, all right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're implementing it, right? Yahweh, Jeho uh, uh, Jehovah, uh, spaketh concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man do, doeth travail with the child. Uh, wherefore do I see every man with his uh, hands on his loins? Amen. And as a woman in travail on all faces are turned into paleness again, speaks again to a healing condition, all right? Uh, um, it speaks again uh, to a lack of fruitfulness, all right? It says this, alas, for then that great day, so uh, that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will break his yoke off of his neck. I will burst thy bonds, and the strangers shall no more serve uh, themselves of him, uh, but they shall serve the Lord, Jehovah, their God, and David their king, who I will rape, uh, who, whom 
I will raise up unto them. Uh, therefore fear uh, thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee and thy seed from the land of captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. He says this, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Uh, though I will make thee full of the end of nations, whether I have scattered thee, yet well, I will make thee a full end of thee, and I will correct thee in measure, and I will not leave thee altogether unpunished. All right. But this is what I wanted to get to. Verse number twelve says this. Concerning this, he says, for the Lord saith, or for this, uh, for thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up, and thou hast no healing medicines. All thy lovers have forgotten thee, uh, they seek not thee, for I have wounded thee with a wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I need you to understand this from the perspective of the expectation of God, all right, as it relates to his justice and it relates to his mercy. And this is probably goes back to what Sister Sylvia was asking about. He says this, he says, the condition, amen, of the children of Israel is a bruise that is uncurable. It is a wound that is grievous. He says it is a condition or a cause that no one will take up. He says, and most importantly, there are no healing medicines save amen the lord himself because he is jehovah rapha all right he says because of thy iniquity and because of thy sins being increased he says there is no one none of your lovers none of none of those who oppressed you none of those that you went after none of these false gods none of these will take up thy cause he says uh, in verse number 15 he says why criest thou for thy affliction thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. He says, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and thy adversaries, and every one of them shall go into captivity. And they, uh, and they that spoil thee shall be spoiled, and all that prey upon thee uh, will I, I give thee for prey. This is the restoration that God is talking about. This is the expectation, amen, that we should have of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we find here in verse number 17. He says, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. <laughs> Oh, uh, the, 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 the Jehovah Rapha is a God who is so sensitive and so in tune with us that he realizes the condition of sin that we find ourselves in leaves us without hope. It leaves us, amen. There are certain conditions that we in, in, embark upon that the only cure of, the only thing that will rid us of this thing that is, I need you to catch the scripture. Go back and read verses number 12 through 17 for yourself. The condition of sin. The condition of not being in alignment with God's will puts us in a situation, puts us in a place of incurable disease. He says there is no healing medicine for it. The only thing that can accommodate a man, a, 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 a chance for reconciliation with me is I, the Lord God, have to be the God that restoreth thee. I have to be Jehovah Rapha. Uh, there are certain things, amen, that we have ailments of down here on earth. That we just seek doctors out. God has given us the wonders of medicine for us to perform exercise. Amen. If you have a common cold, you can go out now. Amen. And you can pray unto God. But also you have the wherewithal. Amen. Because of what God has placed in the atmosphere and the dominion that he's given us in the small fraction of intellect he's given us for us to go forth and to, amen, find mechanisms for healing. But there is a condition of the soul that is a jive for Jehovah Rapha. There was a condition of peril that we find ourselves in after we make mistakes, after we make mistakes, after we fall apart, amen, after we feel as if there will be even no vindication. There are some things that we find ourselves in because truth be told, many of us, amen, have the, have the children of Israel uh, 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 syndrome, all right, falling after false lovers, falling after false, amen, uh, 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 
aspirations, falling after, amen, a, a carrying on and going after things that bring nothing to us, a, 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 a wallowing in things that bring no glory to God. We find ourselves slaved and imprisoned, amen, to this flesh and to this oppressive flesh. Uh, and the scripture says that the Lord is a God of justice, so to the point that he is going to reconcile, amen, his bride. He is going to reconcile his children. He is going to reconcile the house of Judah and the house of Israel. He is going to reconcile his people. Uh, he says there's going to be a time. There was a time when you were devoured. There was a time when you were the source of, amen, your adversaries. He says there was a time when you were the spoil. But this is going to be a reverse of course that takes place only when I, Jehovah Rapha, step in. When I step in in my isness, amen, when I step in, amen, with the full weight of restoration and being the God that healeth thee, he, then you can fully appreciate verse number 17. He says, I am the God that will restill, restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. The expectation that we need to have of God comes from our understanding of God's word that comes when we have an appetite for the things that we find in God's word. Those of us who were outcast, those of us who were dismissed, those of us, amen, who were afflicted, those of us who were disenfranchised, those of us who were impoverished, those of us uh, who were outside of God's will. He says this 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 is the God. Amen. I am that God. He says, I, the Lord, I am the Lord. I am the Lord that will restore thy health. He says, and I will heal thy wounds that no medicine can heal. This is what we find in Christ. This is what we find in relationship with God. And this should be our expectation. That when we fall short and when it feels as if the enemy is, is, is advantaged and it seems as if, you know, there is no way out. There is an expectation that we have that God not only is a God that brings healing, but the God that brings restoration. Our expectation should be restoration. That restoration is, when interpreted, means a new likened into a restored place back into an original condition our expectation of god has to be that he is jehovah Rapha, amen that he is the god that he is the god that not just produces a healing that no bomb can can come up with amen uh that, that there is no solution for it. there is no advil for this condition of sin he is the god that not only has the ability to heal naturally but he is the God that has the ability to build to, to heal spiritually and to restore us to make us a new in relationship with him. And so with our expectation of him, him being Jehovah, him being self-sufficient, him being is and was and is to come. And for him being amen, a source for us to continue to receive revelation of the revelation that we need to amen, take to heart is God's ability to produce a healing on the inside of us that brings comfort through his word. The word that tells us uh, that many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth us from us all. It is our alignment with his word, amen, that, that becomes the healing for us. But most importantly, the revelation of restoration is what we need. He is the God that comes to put us and to set us back in place. He is not just the God that comes to bandage us up and, and send us on our way. He is the God that allow, that wants to come into our life to realign us, to make us anew. And so we should walk in a newness because he is a God that doesn't just heal us of our boo-boos and our aches and our concerns of our heart. But he is the God that can restore and replenish our relationship. When he is the God, amen, that restores, he is the God that puts Israel and Judah back into fellowship as if they never fell out to begin with. That should be our expectation of God, that when he comes with the grace, that when he comes with the forgiveness, that when he comes with atonement, that when he stands in the weight of him being uh, our restorer, our healer, our sufficiency, amen, that he is the God that puts us back into alignment. He puts us back as if nothing ever happened. He restores us back into our condition before we fell out. And that only happens when we awaken, amen, and when we see him uh, uh, stand up in our lives and become Jehovah Rapha. He is healing. He is the source of it, all right? He is. And, 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 and please know that when we see him as Jehovah Rapha, when we see him as Jehovah, uh, some, some say Jehovah, amen, Rapha, uh, Rohi, uh, Rofi is, a, is another interpretation. We have so many different interpretations of that in scripture based upon uh, um, uh, the interpretation of, of the text. But when we see Jehovah Rapha, amen, we see a glory of God. 
There is an expectation of glory that is attributed with his divine nature to heal. Again, this glory is different than the than us having a surgery down here on earth or amen of seeking a general physician or us taking our children to the physicians down here or an examiner down here there is a glory that is that encompasses him in perpetuity and continue in a continued nature that is always restoring to new restoring to what it was restoring to its original condition and when we have that expectation amen it's hard for us to fall out of his will when you know how hard it is for us, <laughs> amen, to get back, when you know how far, you know, when you really realize how how grace is and how expensive grace is and how merciful he is and how he restores and brings freedom and renewedness to us. Like we talked about on Sunday, when he puts us back into fellowship and puts us back, amen, robed and with rings and with shoes and with purpose and with identity, it's it, then, then our expectations shift because he's not just a God that restores. He wants us to be a God. He, he wants us to be in a relationship where we walk in restoration, where we walk in a restored nature. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Amen. If he always is leading me, always is guiding me, every time we take a pause or a break, wherever he sends me, there is a, a restoration in him. There is a newness that comes to him, which means we should not be saints that are worn out. We are not saints who should be mentally fatigued. Come on, let's talk. Look, come on, let's talk mental health now. He is the God that restores. That means the, the weight of the mistakes, the weight of the sin, the bondage and imprisonment we no longer have to wear. The condemnation we no longer have to, to wear because he is the Lord that restoreth. He is the God that goes beyond medicine. He is the God that goes beyond appeal or any prescription that we have down here. He is the God, amen, that even touches the fabric of our intellect, amen, and puts us in a place of restoration amen and dares us to even think about where we were because he says there is therefore not no condemnation to them who are in christ jesus that is the revelation of jehovah Rapha. my god the god that healeth the god that restoreth the god that maketh new the god amen that puts us back into alignment with where he desires us to be my God, there's so much more, amen, but there is a glory that comes, amen, that is produced when we visit this concept of him being Jehovah Rapha, amen, Jehovah Rophi, Jehovah Rapha, all right, whatever the interpretation is based on we see it, there is an expectation of a glory that we see, and it's that glory that helps us become comfortable even with our sufferings. When we read of the sufferings in Hebrews 2, uh, uh, the sufferings that are uh, associated with us being sons of glory, uh, the, uh, uh, when we refer to our Lord as our captain of our salvation, who is made perfect to our suffering, when we hear of the, the sufferings, amen, that children, amen, of glory, amen, must, uh, must take on, amen, because we have a tender and loving father who chasteneth his children, amen. Uh, when, we, when we see, amen, all of the affliction amen of the children of men amen that the Lord does willingly amen afflict us according to the book of amen lamentations amen will we see amen that that we cannot be partakers without chastisement amen then there has to be a healthy expectation that the wounds that we receive that the wounds that we have with walking from Christ or walking with Christ the wounds that we get sometimes amen that we call Amen. A, a friendly fire. You know, the, the affliction that we get when we're oppressed by our brothers and our sisters who are of the faith. Amen. We must believe that he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that restores and won't let me have bitterness and vent him toward my brother because he is a God that restores. He is a God that places us back into a I hope this is helping somebody tonight because we totally miss the restorative process associated with God being Jehovah Rapha. And our expectation should be anytime I'm dealing with affliction, amen, not only does the healing come from me to get over it, the healing comes from me to, 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 to continue to walk in it. The healing comes, amen, that allows me to be restored. Maybe this is why, amen, Paul was talking about him being afflicted in his side and seeking the Lord three times and the Lord not removing that affliction. I believe because Paul was not necessarily dealing with the, the element of healing. He knew that the, that, the, that the thorn was there to keep him humble. He knew that that was part of the process. That was part of the glory. Amen. But I believe that he had an understanding of Jehovah Rapha, the God that, amen, brings restoration that won't allow me to wallow in the pain of the offense. That won't allow me to uh, to, to to wallow in the pain of the season. God's is saying we have to change our expectation. 
our expectation is that in walking with Christ, we're going to get hurt. <laughs> Woo, help me tonight. Some is going to be self-inflicted. Some of it's going to be inflicted, uh, inflicted by the enemy. Some of it's going to be just cause and circumstance walking with Christ. But we must realize that the expectation of him being a healer goes beyond. I'm going to just bandage and I'm going to limp forever. No, it's going to be I'm going to have a new purpose. Because God does something on the inside of us psychologically that won't let us stay broken. And that's why you can make it with pain. That's why you can play through pain. That's why you can pray through pain. That's why you can press through pain. That's why you can keep seeking God through pain. That's why you won't leave the church even though you've been hurt. Because God will produce a restorative nature that won't allow me to give up. Because he is the God that restoreth my soul. If I never get another leg, amen, he won't let me, he won't let my mind go too far out without, amen, acknowledging and thanking him, amen, for his grace and his sufficiency and the healing that makes him Jehovah Rapha. I am the God that he healeth thee. Uh, he says, and, 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 and uh, I got to teach another night, King. <laughs> uh, because, amen, if there's one thing that we must, we, we must take to heart is that the word of God becomes our source of healing. It is the word of God that becomes our source of healing. Uh, it is he that tells us he would not leave us comfortless. I certainly believe that when he's talking about him not leaving us comfortless, I certainly believe any discomfort, amen, eventually brings about a pain. But he is Jehovah, he is Jehovah Rapha. He is the God that healeth. So I certainly believe that when he says he does not leave us comfortless, I certainly believe that when we learn to change our expectation, when we learn to focus on an expectation of healing that comes on the inside of us, it's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Somebody say something to me. It is the Holy Ghost that brings the comfort to help me get through pain. It's the Holy Ghost that helps me get over the wounds of brokenness. Uh, it's the Holy Ghost because he will not leave me comfortless. When he rises on the inside of me, it is with the expectation that he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that brings healing and the God that restores. And that restoration can, and that peace only comes through the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. And I would tell I would tell you that you will never find healing until you get the gift of the Holy Ghost. I would tell you that you will never fully find restoration until you get truth from your inward parts. That you will always be live a life of discomfort. I'm living for God. I'm not smoking. I'm not drinking. I'm not having sex. But without the Holy Ghost, you will always be comfortless. Because he desires to get on the inside of us. My God. Help me. Oh, can't teach it all tonight, but I hope this amen starts amen us down a path of having a raised expectation concerning him. <laughs> there are times like tonight when I'm just teaching to myself, y'all. You know, I, you know, I can't I can't even see the comments sometimes. But amen tonight. I hope that you would walk. I hope tonight that you would walk in a perpetual state of healing. I declare and decree tonight that the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, would rise on the inside of you and that the healing uh, would come forth to allow you to realize that the afflictions will be many. The afflictions and the darts will come on all ends, but He is the God that healeth. He is the God, amen, that brings forth a healing that is unheard of, unfounded. He is the God of restoration and he won't let me, he won't let me be oppressed. He won't let me be depressed. He won't let me, amen, fall to or faint or get weary in the moment. He knows how to lead me beside somebody. Help me thank him highly for the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of us. He says, I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. That's confirmation, saints. Amen. I think that's something that we, ha we have to, in our mind, reimagine what it means for us to serve a God who is Jehovah so sufficient, but Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth. The God that restores, the God that repositions us, the God that realigns us, the God that sets us, amen, in green pastures, and the God that won't let us burn out and flame out, amen. <laughs> help me, Lord, help me, help me, help me. The reason that keeps many of us from going to a psych war, amen, the thing that keeps many of us from anti, amen, depressants, the thing that keeps many of us from, amen, going backwards in life is the assurance and the, and the refreshing of the Holy Ghost that comes 
comes as he restores our soul because he won't let us be comfortless. Because the pain is tortuous. Come on, somebody talk to me. Walking with God sometimes hurt. Walking with God sometimes is not comfort comfortable. But he doesn't leave us comfortless. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I, I, I've got to preach that one of these Sundays. Uh, uncomfort, uncomfortable, but not comfortless. <laughs> that even... The, just think of the, the the conundrum of that the the, the uh, how that's working against the <laughs> working against this I'm, I'm uncomfortable but I'm not comfortless oh God my God help me help me help me help me help me this gives us focus this helps us this helps us when he, when we hear count it all joy when we fall and find ourselves into the high temptations right count it all joy when we have to deal with the sufferings of this life amen when we it, it also gives us comfort and consonance amen and focus when amen we see amen uh, uh, his grace is sufficient for thee that's that's what Paul meant my grace is sufficient for thee he was speaking, he was speaking, he was speaking, hallelujah, to a condition, amen, that only can be produced when we have the full revelation of the Holy Ghost work on the inside of us that leads us to restoration. Because, again, he is the God that brings natural healing. He is the God, but he is the God that brings a peace on the inside of us that no matter what's going on, I, I, I look at things in a new prism and a new light. That's, this is what helps Paul say in his most critical time when he's hurting, y'all, when he's laid up hurting, there is a pain in his side. There is a thorn in his side, but there is a perspective that comes in the midst of it that says, my grace is sufficient for thee. That comes, that's restorative thinking. That is Jehovah Rapha. Saints, we have got to change our expectation. We get hurt and we get wounded and we want to leave. I know I'm, I, I know I'm out of my time, y'all. I know I'm. this Bible class has gone on way too far, but I'm blessing myself. Because we get challenged and we get oppressed and we get, and the pains associated with it. But restorative thinking comes when he becomes Jehovah Rapha, the God that doesn't just heal, but the God that restores, make new, and puts me back into place in fellowship with him. Oh, hang with me. Hang with me, y'all. Next, next Bible class, we're going to deal more with this concept of healing because I certainly believe we're in a place spiritually that God wants us to heal. You cannot go into a new year dragging the weight on the barriers and, and dragging the uh, 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 the scars of yesterday and the weight of oppression. Amen. God wants you to be healed through and through. God wants you to realize I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the God that healeth thee. When you know my name, when you know who I am, when you know my identity, you will never be broken again. Help me tonight. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the comfort that comes. We thank you. We appreciate, oh God. We appreciate you for being a God that healeth. The God that healeth. The God that healeth. That doesn't just temporary heal, but the God that healeth in perpetuity. We thank you for being Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Tonight, oh God, we expect you to heal. Oh, Shabbat. We expect you to heal. And most importantly, oh God, we expect, oh God, restoration, oh God. Hallelujah. As we turn, as we release people, as we forgive people, as we turn the page on things, oh God, as we really let people go and let things go, oh God, I pray for newness of mind. I pray for newness of strength. I pray, oh God, for the wherewithal to keep going forward in the name of Jesus, oh God. You want to bring healing to the house of Bethesda, oh God. Hallelujah. We're not standing by the water waiting for it to be troubled, oh God. We're, water, we're walking in the water of your word, oh God, and your, your spirit, oh God, that's on the inside of us. I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh God, today, O oh God, that we would stop tormenting about it. We would stop being oppressed by it, O oh God. We would have a new lens, a new contents, a, a, a new psyche, O oh God, concerning your divine healing for us, O oh God. I'm praying, O oh God, for physical healing. I'm praying for emotional healing, O oh God. I'm praying that the scars and the wounds of yesteryear, O oh God, that have driven us to depression and driven us away from your will, O oh God, will draw us nearer to a revelation of who you are and a healthy expectation of your God for you to heal and to restore as only you can. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that you would restore our souls, O oh God, as you lead us, O oh God, by still waters, as you are Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, O oh God. We believe you, O oh God, that you will restore our soul, O oh God, that you would be, O oh God, Jehovah Rapha, O oh God. We thank you right now. No more torment, no more anxiety, no more worry, no more fear, O oh God. We know, O oh God, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, O oh God, but that you have a short hand of deliverance. I promise to keep 
a promise, oh God, to preserve, a promise, oh God. We desire to know you more, oh God. As you reveal yourself, as we reveal your character, who you are as Jehovah, oh God, that whatever we attach to you, oh God, happens in perpetuity. We pray, oh God, that we have, oh God, purposeful peace, oh God, that we have purposeful healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. If they never say sorry, oh God, if they never, oh God, oh God, if they never, oh God, repent unto us, oh God. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we would operate and walk, oh God, in the healing, oh God, to go forward and further in you, oh God. Forgetting those things which are behind us, oh God, we know, oh God, your grace is sufficient, oh God, for your strength is made perfect even in weakness, oh God. And we glorify you this day. We thank you for being the God of all healing and the God of all peace. And we pray, oh God, that we have an expectation, oh God, that you would bring restoration to our soul. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This is Pastor Kyra Shorter. If you don't know the Lord Jesus and a part of your sin, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are living beneath your privilege. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is what we need. Hallelujah. We got witnesses in the comment section right now. I'm just looking down here right now. Thank y'all so much for going with me, tapping in with me for tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sweet wonder. Sweet wonder. He is the God that healeth thee. Amen. But without the Holy Ghost, you will never have that comfort. If you need it, if you need a refreshing, holler, I hear you, Lord, loud and clear. I hear you loud and clear. Saints, I hear the Lord saying, there's a night of refreshing that's coming before we end this year up. It may be watch night service. There's a night of refreshing that's coming to the house. And I pray that y'all would just go with me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because some of us need to be just a refreshing of the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you don't, you will always be in a place where you are comfortless. And God says, I desire to be your comfort. You can know him through water baptism in Jesus' name and the filling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As he reveals himself as Jesus. Jehovah to you as a sufficient God, as a God that works and operate, operates uh, in perpetuity. I pray that this word will stick to you, stick to your ribs. Amen. I certainly pray it will stick to your heart. I pray that you begin to unlock the scriptures. Amen. And see that you have a God. Hallelujah. Amen. Who not only fights for you as your banner. Amen. But he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee, the God that restoreth thee. Amen. I'm believing God for restoration in your personal life as we go forth. Listen, if you want to be a blessing to the ministry, Amen. Certainly. Amen. You can do so. Cash at PayPal. Zale. If this word blessed you tonight. Amen. And brought a degree of healing to you. I certainly pray that you would uh, sow a seed. Sow a seed even right now. Everybody. Amen. Let's sow a seed. I don't care if it's two dollars. I don't care if it's what you know. If, if, the, if tonight's word blessed you. Sow a seed. Amen. Let's sow into the kingdom of God. God is challenging me to push the people to give in the season. It says. Uh, and, and, and I know it, it's not begging. He says just com compel my people to give uh, some people need to be restored even in giving um He's encouraging people to give this season. I don't know what God is up to. I mean, I don't. I don't claim to be a, a deep prophetic. You know, some preachers who that they make the monocle. I just believe the Lord is saying to tell my people to trust me in giving. There's some people who have stopped trusting me. Trust me in giving. Hallelujah. Uh, so we'll see. But if you desire Bible baptism in Jesus' name and the filling of the Holy Ghost, uh, you can call us at area code three two three two nine nine two five nine one. Send us an email. I'll come to the church right now. <laughs> Amen. And Baptized. Amen. Uh, if you desire to be baptized in Jesus' name, amen. We pray the grace of God and the strength of God go with you. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in service this upcoming Sunday. We are going to be live in service, in house, amen, Sunday, amen. And I, uh, hallelujah, preach it, Pastor Marty. Man, God bless you, Pastor Martin, amen. Dorf Hope Christian Church, hallelujah, in San Diego. I'm praying, amen, for, please keep my, my, my family in San Diego in prayer. Uh, my my uh, One of my good uh, sisters. Uh, Sister Rainey Hayes passed away. I grew up with her. Amen. She's 36 year old. Amen. Uh, grew up with her. She passed away of sickle cell anemia. It's hitting a lot of us church kids that grew up with her in church because we all grew up as pew babies, sang in the youth choir together. Amen. Let's pray for us. Pray for children. Amen. Pray for that family. Join me in praying for them. God bless you, Pastor Marty. Amen. God bless everybody for being with us tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in fellowship with us on this upcoming Sunday. I'm having myself, my wife. Thank God the shorter kids are asleep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I pray tonight that he receives stores your soul even as you sleep and that there's some things that you don't think about no more and just rest in the fact that he is the God that healeth and let that thing be healed these these 30 years of being broken about something it ends tonight in the name of Jesus hallelujah I just feel this thing I want to let it go but I hear tonight the Lord saying be restored 
be healed and never walk in that place again. Don't let it rob you. We're going to get into that next week. I've got something special coming in. Talk to us next week about the other side of healing. So you want to tune in next week. Amen. We're looking forward to God. We're counting down. Amen. To the end of this year. Amen. But we're looking forward to God doing great things as he raised our expectation. Again, if you want baptism in Jesus name or the of the Holy Ghost, don't hesitate. Give us a call. Check out our website. Check us out on social media. I'm way too long. Y'all, but I was just feeling my, I was just feeling. Amen the word coming forth tonight and sometimes you even need even sometimes a preacher has to preach to himself so i love you all the love of christ jesus nothing you can do about it be blessed be encouraged be inspired we love you all take care in jesus name peace hallelujah